Hey guys, in today's tutorial you are going to learn the absolute basics of DaVinci Resolve Fusion, which is going to give you an understanding of how to use the different nodes in there, how to color them, how to keyframe them, everything that you need to know to get started and start building a good foundation to become very proficient in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. So without any further ado, we're gonna drag a Fusion composition into our timeline. Boom, just like that. Now it's out there, as you see, nothing, because it's empty. So now we're gonna go into our Fusion tab down here. Boop. And now that this has popped up, we're gonna move our media out over here because we're not gonna need that just yet. As you'll notice though, on this node, is a little white dot right there. That little white dot represents which viewer it's going to be presented in. So the one is this one here, this viewer number one, and then the second one is viewer number two right here. So you can select that either by clicking on one of those two dots or by pressing two or pressing one on your keyboard. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make like a blank text call out, something that looks like this, that you're able to track to things and label them in your video. So the first thing you're going to want to do is use a background node. Background nodes just give you a color to work with. They can either be the whole screen a color, or the way that we're going to do it, we're going to mask it so it's just a specific shape that's a color. So background, click on that. We get a background node out here. And then the shape that we're going to use to start this off is a circle. So we're going to go into our little masks right here and we're gonna click on our ellipse mask and all that is is a circle. Ellipse just means circle. And we're going to put our background right here, now that it's been masked to a circle, into our first viewer. So that'll pop up and if we click on our mask, you can see that we have controls. We can move it around, we can rotate it, which you can't really see because it's a circle. And over here, we've got the properties of this thing. So what I like to do when I'm working with circles is right click on width, go down to expression, click expression, and then drag this plus to height. That way it stays a circle and doesn't go all oval on us because that's not what we want right now. If it is though, don't do this. So we're going to drag our height. Since our width is attached to that, it's going to change both of them at the same rate. So we're going to make a small little circle here to start as our point on the thing that we are going to be labeling. And then, now that we have our circle here, we're going to make a new background node so that we have another color. If we pop that up in viewer number two, you'll see that it's just black. You can change it to red, you can change it to white. I'm doing that over here in the properties panel just so that that's clear. We're going to leave it as black and we're going to, this time, we're not going to be using a rectangle or a circle. We're going to be right clicking, going to add tool, going to mask, and then hitting mask paint. Now that we're in mask paint, we're going to drag that onto the background because since this was in the mask menu, it is a mask. And every blue line you see is going to represent a mask. Every blue connection is a mask connection. So here we can see blue line, blue connection, mask blue line, blue connection, mask. So with our mask node here, what you can do is you can either paint on and see that, or you can use this point paint thing, which allows basically the pen tool from Photoshop or After Effects or Premiere. So we are going to click in the middle of this and we're gonna make a line going up and then a line going over to the side like that. And since we don't wanna be working like this with our project all spread out, we're going to connect these two and their outputs, which is going to create what's called a merge node. If you wanna add one of these without doing it that way, you just click right here. This is the merge node button. So the green line will appear on top of whatever the yellow line is doing and everything up until this point, all of these little commands, so mask this background, mask this background, we have these two backgrounds coming together into this merge to make one thing. So everything up until a merge is shown in this merge. So if we were to bring this to media out, set media out to number two, we would see both our dot and our line. 
But right now, we're gonna focus on our line a little bit. So we're gonna go back to our mask paint because that's where our line controls are. And we're gonna take that softness all the way down just because I'm not a huge fan of how soft that looks. We're also gonna shrink our line here. And then we're gonna put our merge node in viewer one so that we can see everything up until that point in the first viewer here. And we're gonna get rid of this. So if we double click down here, it'll take away all of our guides and everything, and we can see that we've already got a pretty nice looking call out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add in some text, because generally when you put a call out in, you're going to want to add text. So we'll throw in text with this text button right here. You could also do add tool and then find text in here. It's in generators, text plus, just like that. So with our text, we're also going to add this into the output of that merge. So now we have merge 2, which is everything from this merge and the thing that's connected to it. So text. And you can see in a line what's going on. So we've got our backgrounds, and then our backgrounds are being masked, and then those are being merged into this next merge, which connects it with the text. So we're going to click on text, head up to our properties panel up here, and we are going to put callout. Oops, callout. And now we're going to put Merge 2 in our first viewer, and we're going to be able to see everything that's in Merge 2. So we've got our callout text here. We're going to drag that up and then over so that it's on top of our callout. And if we double click, we'll be able to get a clear picture of what that looks like. That's looking pretty good. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how to color all these things. And for pretty much everything, you color it the same way. So you just come over into our properties, you hit color, and then you pick color. We're going to work with some blue text. No, we are not. That looks awful. We're going to work with some red text so that we can actually read it. And then we are going to start keyframing. So for the keyframes, you don't really need to worry about the background so much as you need to worry about the masks that are changing the backgrounds. So this mask, the mask paint, we're going to do second, and then the ellipse mask, the first mask on this background, it's making our little circle here, we are going to start at frame zero, boom, you can see frame zero right here, this will tell you what frame you're in at any given point, and we're going to start with it absolutely gone, so completely tiny, and then we're going to make a keyframe, and since these are connected, this is also going to keyframe our width. And then we're going to pop forward to frame 10, and we're going to bring it back up to about that size right there. Now we're at frame 10, so we can click on Mask Paint. Right when our circle gets to its full extent, we're going to want to bring the line created by our Mask Paint into effect. So at frame 10, we'll keyframe it so that it's absolutely gone. And then we'll move ahead, I don't know, say 8 frames, and we will go ahead and drag that... Oop, we will drag that up to a full mask, or a full right on right here. So if we go back and we watch this, it's going to grow our circle, and then whoop, it's going to draw that. So now for text, we are going to actually create a mask on top of our text, so that our text is able to like whoosh in from a direction. So we're going to go ahead and hit rectangle mask. Then we're going to move our rectangle mask over here until it's right at the edge so that as it comes out onto this, we're able to actually see it. So as you can see, or oh, well, I did that backwards. So we're going to want our rectangle mask to be on top of this so once it comes onto the line, we're able to see our text. So you can see, drag it over, call out. Drag it over this way, it's gone. So we're going to start at frame, which one was it for our mask paint? 24. We're going to start at frame 24. So for text, you're going to want to go into this next one here, which is the layout panel. Again though, center X, center Y, and then 24, we're going to make a keyframe, and then 32, we're going to go ahead and drag that over. Whoa. Go ahead and drag that over onto our little call out line. And then if we play it back, we'll see the circle grows, the line comes out, and then our text comes onto our line. So if we bring this to a media out so that it shows up in our edit, we can go back here, we'll pop that up, and then we will use our four color gradient so that everything's very visible. And then after this little red bar turns blue, we will be able to play it back at full speed. 
So we'll hit play, circle grows, line comes out, then the text. Then to get that to go away, we're going to go back into Fusion, get our text again, because that's going to leave first before everything else. And now that we're significantly farther down the timeline, we're going to go actually even a little bit further. And then back one frame, we're going to make a keyframe so that it stays here and doesn't slowly leave. And then we're going to go eh, about that far. And then we're going to bring our text off. And then we're going to go back to this frame here. Or actually, we're going to go one frame before our text is completely gone. We're going to go back to our mask paint. We're going to go one frame further back. And then we are going to use our right on command again. We're going to click on create a new keyframe so it doesn't slowly go back. And then we're going to go forward just a few frames. We'll say to 97 here. And then we're going to whoop, get that all the way gone. And then once that goes into the circle, we're going to make our circle smaller. So we're going to pop back one frame, set our keyframe again. And then we're going to go forward a few frames and then we are going to make our circle completely disappear. So now if we watch it back in here, slow-mo, boom, text comes out, and then we skip ahead, text goes away, line goes away, and circle shrinks. And then you've got a full animation, just like that. If you guys are interested in Fusion, but you want some sort of a template to work from, in the description down below, I've got five for sale. I've got some titles, I've got a call out like this, I've got some lower thirds. Just so you can see what's going on in those different things when it comes to the node web, you can pick those up and you can use them for whatever you want. So, but uh, just to go over this again so that you don't get them and you're like, hey, these are locked in. If you want to change colors, you just click on the node that you want to change, like these backgrounds, and then you're going to change them to a color. Say text, you're going to change your text to a color. That doesn't look right right now just because of where we're at, but colors are over here, all of your controls are over here, and if you want to import a node web, what you're going to want to do is bring in a fusion composition like that. You just drag it in, click on it, do this. This stuff won't be there if it's your first one. And delete. So you go up to File, click Import Fusion Composition, and then we're just going to do Slanted Title. You already saw that one earlier in the video. Hit Enter on that one, and then it will pop up in here. And then as you can see, just whoop, line, and then it goes over to the text. It hasn't fully buffered yet. It's not actually that slow. And then that line will break down and wipe out the text. So there's a whole bunch of different options, things that you can do in DaVinci Resolve Fusion, as long as you are feeling creative and you feel like putting in a little bit of work. Because if you're used to layers, like you're in After Effects or Premiere Pro, this can look a little daunting. But once you get used to the node web and it's kind of the same thing, it's just this layer is on top of this layer which comes together here in this merge and then it goes to the output. So pretty similar, but it can look daunting. It, like I said, if you're looking to get a little bit of a template to work from, pick those up in the description below and you'll have a pretty good head start. I really hope that this video was informational. I hope that you learned enough to make you confident to at least start clicking on the Fusion tab down here because once you get into it and once you start learning it, it's a really incredibly powerful tool. If you guys ask in the comments down below, I will definitely put together some more complex tutorials for this. If you have any specific projects that you're working on that you're trying to get done, let me know down there below and I will make tutorials on how to do those specific things that you guys need to do so that you're able to recreate them and use them in your own edits. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you enjoyed the content, make sure to subscribe to the channel for new videos every single Monday and Wednesday. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.